Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business and in the world of QuickBooks Point of Sale today we are going to have a massive adventure. Just kidding, I'm going to do an overview of what different types of items you can have in your store and on your inventory item list. I guess we call it the item list because it's not just the inventory list, there are actually other types of items as well. Let's jump into it there, but before we do, I want you to click in the link down below in the description and get over to our QuickBooks Point of Sale Facebook group, join the community and ask questions that come to mind when you're working in QuickBooks Point of Sale from day to day. We'd be happy to answer them as a community and help each other out. Otherwise, uh, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to get all the latest greatest videos that I'm coming out with each day. All right, item types. So if we go and we add an item, we need to choose what type of item it is. Now, the most used item in retail, I would say, is the inventory item. The inventory item is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you're getting it from your vendor. You are holding it in inventory. And so it's an asset, right? It's on your books as something you own. And you paid cost of goods for it. And when you sell it, you're going to make income in your income accounts. So that's inventory. Uh, inventory is very special because point of sale actually tracks the quantities that arrive. And then as you sell them, it depletes that quantity out. And all the accounting that goes along with that, uh, receiving that asset value. All right, so that's inventory, and that has to do with quantities and number. Now, non-inventory, you can see that we grade out here, and you can also see that the cost of goods and the asset accounts change when we go to non-inventory. Cost of goods is just gonna be a purchase, and the asset uh, account is also going to be the same account because of the way that the accounting works. But anyways, non-inventory items do not track on-hand quantities. So for example, uh, I have a store, the guy sells fishing lures, and he has like a million of these little jig heads. Well, he's not gonna count thousands and thousands of jig heads when he does his inventory. I mean, that'd be crazy. So he buys them, massive quantities of them and when somebody brings them up they just ring them up they're all non-inventory items and so when he sells them it doesn't deplete a quantity it just makes income and he's not tracking them when he buys them it goes to purchases and when he sells them it goes to merchandise sales and that's it we don't we don't track the quantities so that is non-inventory Next you have service. Service and non-inventory are very much similar. There's no quantities that are tracked. They just have a different cost of goods account, subcontracted services. Um, or you know what? Sometimes when you just do a service for somebody, you do labor or you do some manipulation of the product, you customize it, and so you charge some labor. labor and so that would be a service and that would be income on service sales. And so you just receive that income pretty much out of thin air because you didn't pay for anything in the first place except maybe your employee's salary. And so you would uh, create a labor item as a service or a customization item as a service because you're not supplying anything from a vendor. So you would choose service. Now, the next two are the most often confused uh, with each other uh, from people that I talk to they they're the most misunderstood types of items and those are assembly and group items and you can check out our other videos specifically on on these and how to use them and how to make them but the long story short is an assembly is like manufacturing and the the final product is going to be a combination made up of other things that you already had in your inventory. So <laughs> here's a really dumb example. So let's say that I receive from, I'm, I'm a car maker. I mean, nobody's a car maker, but here's my, my just dumb example, all right? So I order tires from one vendor. 
wheels from another vendor, doors from a vendor, uh, car body from a vendor. I Let's say I receive all of those things into my inventory separately. So I have wheels on hand, I have I have the tires on hand, and I have the car doors on hand, and they're all their own items. And so when I make the car, I make an assembly item. The assembly item is the car, and when the car comes into being, it depletes all of the uh, quantities of those other items. It depletes uh, four wheels and it depletes four tires and two doors and whatever and all of those uh, items that are separate then get depleted and all of a sudden I have quantity one of a car right does that make sense uh, in some other video I'll come up with a better example but you're depleting all of the ingredient items and you are creating one of the assembly item and so you can use that assembly item over and over and over again uh, to create more quantities of that while depleting quantities of everything that makes it. Now, how is that different from a group item? A group item is a very special item. It's kind of, I like to think of it as a bundle. And so uh, I could have four different, let's, let's, uh, let's do sports. So. Uh, my daughter's doing hockey right now and so let's say you have skates on your item list and you have uh, shoulder pads and you have helmets and hockey sticks all right so we got four things there and they are all separate inventory items on your list now people can come into your store and buy skates people can come into your store and buy a hockey stick they can do that all by itself if they want to but you have a special bundle going on. So if somebody comes in and buys all four of those pieces together as a bundle, then you would ring up the bundle group item. And the group item consists of all four of these, but they can also still be sold separately. Whereas the assembly item, you know, the four beginning items become the one new item and then you put the one new item on the shelf. But with the group item, they're four separate items and they'll stay four separate items until you make the sale and somebody said, oh, I have the bundle, I, I brought the bundle up, and then probably they get a better price because you can price the bundle. So I'm buying the four piece hockey bundle and I got, uh, it was $10 less than buying them four separate items, right? So it's a group bundle, usually has a discount uh, on the group item. And there we go. We've made it through all of the item types in QuickBooks Point of Sale. There is one more item type that's actually not here, and it's only for special sales orders, and it's actually called a special order item. And it's, it's like something you've never had in your store before, and you would add it to a sales order and so you can specially order something for a customer and it doesn't actually really become an item but you can convert it to a real item uh, i'll talk more about that in another video that once again was called the special order item and otherwise these are all of the items in quickbooks point of sale my name is peter with blackrock business leave your comments and questions down below and i'll do my best to answer them but the great place to get your questions answered would be in our facebook group so, you have yourself a great day now, bye bye